guys another day, another dollar. Um, so I've had a chance to sleep on the whole BMS situation. Um, and it's a little bit clear in my head, but yeah, I'm kind of, I, I was searching around last night to try and find a BMS. Um, and the problem is there's just no kind of easily, readily available BMSs that you can actually buy, especially in the UK, um, that seem to be kind of, you know, wanting to do the job. You know, the only other thing is China, you know, we can get BMSs from there, but the trouble is, you just don't know what you're getting most of the time. And you, you, to go through the whole rigmarole of testing something, working out, and then, you know, if you need a spare one later on. And also, if we're gonna start making more of these, we, we need like a, a reliable supplier of, of these things. So it's a really tricky one. I know there's a lot of talk online about um, BMSs and different things, and there's this Bactrium um, BMS, I think that's how you, how you pronounce it. Um, but that's really designed for big power walls, you know, which, which have multiple, you know, much more than uh, four cells that I'm using here. There's also the thing going around my head as well. Do you really want to have a dodgy BMS that you don't really know what it's doing sitting there on your pack all the time? Now, I've always thought this, and that's why I've kind of went against the grain um, with BMSs on the e-bike. I don't like discharging through the BMS. I'd rather use, you know, um, battery monitoring and different, different things. Of course, on the adapter, it's really good because you've actually got a dedicated BMS that works with the controller. So that's ideally what you want. You know, this is what an electric vehicle has. It has a proper BMS that actually speaks to everything else in the car. And if things go a bit, a bit wonky, then they'll just, it will, it will send a message to whatever's happening, charging or discharging to either not do it anymore or, or just reduce current or, or something to protect the system. So it does get pretty complicated. And in this system, it's only got four cells. So really do we need to complicate it that much? Current thought is I'm gonna remove this. Actually, I did a few tests with this. Um, and found that it does actually cut off per cell at 3.7 volts, um, 3.75 it is, each cell. So if one cell hits 3.75, it disconnects completely, as, you, as you'd kind of expect. So at least the, the documentation is actually right on that BMS. The only thing with that is obviously that's not enough really. I, I, I'd actually really want to just go up to about four volts a cell. But again, finding a BMS off the shelf that does that, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find one. I, I haven't found one yet. Um, and I've scoured pretty hard. Um, and I think it's mainly because, yeah, everybody just assumes that the BMS should be 4.25 and actually even higher, some of them go up even higher. And then you've got the tolerance factor in as well. Now, 80% capacity is about four volts. So I don't really want to go too much beyond that um, if I'm going to be charging this, you know, directly from solar. Now, there's another thought here. Um, you could just balance charge this pack. So basically use a balance charger like this um, which can actually do nearly 30 amps if you're running it on high enough um, voltage but um, normally it'll run on 300 300 watts so you're going to get 20 amps out of this into this battery but the good thing about this is it will actually monitor each cell if anything happens anything goes wrong it will just cut the charge or and, and actually tell you you can also monitor all the cell voltages on the screen here so that could be a charging solution temporarily for this until I can work out um, you know, what, what to do with the BMS. And obviously this charger needs to actually be powered by something. So, so then you're in another situation where you kind of need something in between you know, the charge controller and um, this charger. So looks like for now I'm gonna keep this leisure battery running um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually connect the charger to that, balance charge this mini power wall and then we can run stuff from this as well. So in effect, we're sinking a load of energy into that from the solar panels and then using that energy to actually more efficiently run, um, you know, your inverter and everything else from this. That way, whilst we're playing around, we're not gonna have any incidents where, you know, it's just left on in here charging and you don't know what's gonna happen. You know, if I get some dodgy BMS from China, you just don't know what's gonna happen. And that's not, that's not what you want. So, at least with having it this way, I can actually control the charge for now and then look into other more sophisticated ways of, of doing this. And the other good thing about that is you're actually charging through the main lead of the battery. So this meter will actually log everything that's going into the battery, which is good. So aside from that, the only th other thing you've got to worry about is low voltage. So um, this inverter actually won't turn off until it hits 10.5 volts. So the battery hits 10.5 volts and the inverter turns off. It's too low for this battery. So, so I found this really cool thing. Um, it's called a Victron Battery Protect. Basically, it's like a, 
it's almost like a switching relay that goes in between, goes on your positive leads, and you can configure it to cut off at a defined voltage, which is just amazing. Um, and also, it's got so it's got a low voltage cut off and a top voltage one. So, so that is perfect. So, I mean, it was I think it was like forty quid or something. So I've ordered one of those. Um, it should be a tomorrow, and that should be a good solution. Oh yeah, and it's got a remote switch as well, so you can actually have like a a low power switch like this to turn that on and off, which effectively turns the battery on and off. So you could have a switch down here, which would turn this um, power wall thing on and off without having to run, you know, huge great um, circuit breakers. So so you could just have this tiny little switch actually turning the whole system on and off. So yeah, that's going to be cool. So this has been on for a few hours, just balancing away. I'm just try, trying to balance things down a little bit. It looks like it's, it looks like it's been straightening things out for quite a while. Um, you know, these things get a little bit warm as they're burning off a bit of, bit of energy. But this sort of size battery is going to take forever to, to balance out if you leave it on there. But it should help. And I want to do a balance charge on here. First, I've got to remove the BMS. Get rid of that for now, um, and then somehow. And then just reconfigure this so that it can accept charging um, from from this charger here. Fun and games. Right, guys, progress. So here's the balancing lead. So I've just made like a, a little balancing lead that goes around here, goes into this charger. These charge leads are a little bit short, but I'll have to um, I'll have to come up with another solution for that. Um, but this means we can basically balance charge this battery now. So I'm just gonna just test the theory and. Uh, Oh yeah, so this is showing you different things about the battery, so the gap, 0 0.004, which is pretty good. Um, I think it's straightened it out a little bit, This putting it on this balancer has straightened it out quite a bit, only in a matter of about 4 or 5 hours, um, so they're all, all sort of level there. No, I haven't tried putting a load on them yet to see you know, if they're going to drop, but um, anyway, we can get out of there. So. Go back to this one. You can see it's on my old quad bike settings for for that for a forest. So charge rate four amps. So we're gonna select go. Battery check. Connected cells, four cells. So you can see how good this charger is. Um, you know, it's just very very foolproof, very very safe, um, and it just. It's going to obviously watch each cell now as it's charging. Uh, so we can actually, we might be able to crank this up. I think we should be able to get a decent amount of current in here. Yeah, it's going up to 7 amps now. How many amps can we actually get out of this? Cool. Yeah, that's going in. Just before I do any more, I want to go back to the, the meter and um, just make sure that it's sort of reset or collect or at least like sort of recalibrated now we should see current going in and out on this on this meter so charge up is 13.2 that's not right probably 12 16 that should be i'm going to go to four volts a cell everything else looks right i think whilst i'm here i need to set this actually to Four volts a cell. Safety timer's off. That's quite good. I was wondering if this this is going to work because obviously if you're going to use this as a solution, you obviously want this to continue charging as charge is going out of the battery. Um, right there it is. So this is the actual thing. You've got to be really careful with this. You don't want to go too high. Um, so. Let's go right down to it actually only lets you go. Ah, it only actually lets you go down as low as 0.18. Now actually this is a, probably the wrong way of doing it really. Um, what I want to do really is set this. So let's do it to too far. Let's do it to 80% and then that should only charge it to 80%. Right, so it's blasting in 10 amps. You can see on the screen here as well, 10 amps going in there, so that's pretty cool. Right guys, whilst that's charging, and hopefully it won't blow up, 
Um, do you remember what I was saying about uh, uh, you can run the, some software on the Raspberry Pi? So you can actually monitor the entire system. If you've got some Victron energy stuff, like we see this solar charge controller, um, you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. So here's a Raspberry Pi 3. And I've already put the software on this uh, SD card here. So when this is powered up, it will boot up a, a monitoring console, which you can then connect, um, you know, like this battery meter, you can connect this to it. See on the back of here, you've got a VE Direct connection there. You can actually connect that by USB to here, to one of these USB ports, and the same on the solar charge controller. And then you can actually log on to that on a computer, a bit like we're doing here, but from anywhere. So you can manage the system. Um, which is pretty pretty neat. So I'm going to be testing that now. I've got one of these cables um, which allows you to connect obviously this to a USB port. This has to be connected to your local network which you can do by plugging in um, just an Ethernet cable into your into your router. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug it into this though first rather than the the battery monitor whilst it's doing its thing over there. But ultimately the overall goal is to have you know all the all the Victron stuff plugged into here and then you can sort of manage and see what's going on um, on the console. If you don't know what I'm going on about, I'll show you. I'll try and show you what, what I'm talking about. So the other end of this goes into my um, airport router that I've got up here. Temporarily, I'm just going to wire this up so it's, so it's going to end up across the workshop. But there, there you go. All right. So one of these things goes in one of these USB ports here. It goes in there like that. And then the other end is going to go in the bottom of the charge controller in there. So I'll stick the camera down. All right, that's connected up. So let's power on the Pi, see what happens. All right, so it's all booting up, doing its thing. See all these green lights flashing down here. That's the disk access light and the power light. And that's obviously uh, network access. And now I'm going to just logged into my router. Um, and it should show up on here as a Raspberry Pi once it's booted there it's Raspberry Pi 2 so that's its IP address so basically you copy that stick that into the browser there fire that up and then so here you go you've got your device list so this is the control panel screen smart solar charger so it's recognized that already from the USB how cool is that so then when you go in there this system is actually the software from one of their hardware controllers but you can basically run it on a Raspberry Pi um, so you don't have to buy the, the bit of kit which is about £500 so you can actually use a Raspberry Pi to run the software completely free um, and and the manufacturer Victron supports it so that's how, how good they are um, so there you go right so you can see all the all the stats of the actual system uh, battery amps so this is this one here is done by Bluetooth so you're limited to uh, obviously you know that sort of range from there to there which is fine for my monitoring and this looks really good but this one here you could access potentially from anywhere and you can manage the system so but I'm gonna have a look around and we're gonna have a play around and see what's what other stuff you can do but um, there's the bulk that's saying it's on bulk charge at the moment not really a lot going on on the panels at the moment it's gone a bit Got a bit grim out there, I think it's raining. Well, I've cranked the charger up to about 17 amps now. 17 amps on there. And you're seeing, and you're seeing on here 200, so 262 watts or something like that. Somewhere around there, yeah, 262 watts. So, that is power going in. All right guys, so I've just, I've just stopped the charge because I was just looking at something and the these cell voltages are so out. Um, and I tried to balance it, but the problem is the cells are balanced when they're just sitting there idle but as soon as you put any amount of current in you're getting a sort of disparity on the on the cells and especially at 20 amps it was quite quite a big gap so, so what I've done is I've, I've lowered the, the maximum capacity and I've put it on a balanced charge at a low current to see if you know you can basically try and we can try and iron this out uh, it's just it's just very weird I thought this I thought these cells were in good shape but I know. Right, and as if by magic, guys, it's the next day. Um, yeah, last night I, oh, it was cold in here. It was just, yeah, it just turned into a bit of a. I was just getting a bit fed up with it because we had that voltage discrepancy problem across the cells. I couldn't work out what was going on. But sometimes when you take a break from these things, you kind of, you kind of realise. So, 
yeah, went inside in the warm, and I got, I was thinking last night, what could it be? Why are two cells just completely getting hammered all the time? Um, and whenever I put it under load or put it in the charger, on the charger, two cells were, were just flying up in the air, weren't they? So it turns out I've just made the biggest schoolboy error ever. And I've just basically put my balance leads in, the, in totally the wrong places. So I've rewired it all, took the battery out this morning and um, changed these balancing leads around. Now, before I had all the balancing leads up here, I'm just getting confused because of the way it's configured. I mean, I know how to wire it up, but just schoolboy error really. So basically, yeah, your balancing leads have got to be in the right places, otherwise it's not going to work. So either end of the battery, because one of these blocks is a battery in itself, and then the one below it is a battery. So you've got four batteries um, made of parallel cells. I don't know why, I just, I don't know why, I don't know why. But anyway, so now I've got a 17 amp load going out, and all the cells are smack bang on. Well, thereabouts anyway, 0.1 of a volt. And it's only gonna be a little bit out, probably because I've, I've balanced charged it, you know, with the wrong balance leads in the wrong position. So, so there you go. So if we flick it up to 23 amps, 25 amps there, it's going up, 26 amps, you know. That's just my camera, by the way. So like 30 amps coming out of here. So this is a good way to do a load test, actually, on this. 30 amps out of here. Um, I don't know what 30 amps would be the equivalent of, you know, coming out of the inverter. Um, I don't know what that's going to give you. Probably not a lot, probably like 200, 300 watts, 300 watts or something like that around that on the inverter. But this is good to do a little test anyway. You can see voltage levels pretty stable. It's good, you can see voltage levels pretty stable there. Nothing's melting. These wires are going to get a little bit warm because they're not really rated for not really rated for 30 amps actually that one's not warm at all these aren't warm so you, obviously again you can see here all the all the um, stats you can see on here as well 393 watts going out 